Meanwhile, on the comic box... It's Punisher time. Growly voice. ba da 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 Comics. I, <clears throat> I'm not going to keep doing that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Big Issue 75 of the Comic Box, part of the geek to geek Podcast Network. I am Rob, your friendly neighborhood comic geek, and normally... In the comic book world, issue 75 is a big deal, and you'll get a double-sized extravaganza issue. But I am almost out of server space, so this is actually going to be a shorter episode than normal. Uh, so let's, like I said, we're, we're doing the Punisher review this week, but let's dive straight into some weekly geekery first. It was Thanksgiving here in the United States. I hope those of you here had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hurt myself. I was helping set things up, and I threw my back out, so I am... Currently in great pain, so that's it's not very geeky, but that kept me from doing other geeky things. Uh, though it did not stop me from starting to read the, and I want to say it's the Charles Soul run on Daredevil that started recently. I got a trade from a co-worker of mine, and the volume is called Chinatown, and it's him with a character I, I guess I've heard of, but don't know much about, called Blindspot, who can turn himself invisible or has a suit that makes him invisible, and so he's being trained by Daredevil. I've only read a couple of pages, and it seems sort of interesting, but it's making me think that maybe I should really go back and read the Mark Wade stuff, because I've heard that that's brighter and uplifting, and that sounds like a good balance to the other thing I started reading, which was Nailbiter. This is a horror comic about a small town that has produced more serial killers per capita than any other place in the United States. And the one that is still living there got off on a technicality or on a hung jury or whatever it is. And it's somebody who, and I guess skip ahead if you don't like creepy things, likes eating fingernails. So it's kind of a Silence of the Lambs thing. So they even call out the ideas there that he's sort of helping them catch what appears to be a new serial killer or someone who might be doing something with old serial killers or copycats or or something. It's not super clear. I only read the first trade, but there's quite a few of them out, and I believe that comic is already done. So I look forward to digging in and seeing what all I can get out of that. Um, I downloaded Forever Evil on Hoopla. That's going to be my next big arc read. As far as watching things, obviously we watched The Punisher. I tried watching Sense8 with my mom. Because Joe Hogan keeps talking about, this is the host of Geektitude, keeps talking about how great it is. Don't watch it with your mom. There is some uh, very graphic sex in that in that show. We powered through the first sex scene. As soon as the second one started, we bailed. And I was like, well, I am watching The Punisher for my podcast, but it's violent. She said, no, that's fine. I don't mind if it's got a good story. And it was straight into the episode with another sex scene. So I, I can't win. I am the king of awkward Thanksgivings this year. But yeah, Sense8, I, I, maybe I'll continue watching it on my own later without my mom present. As far as games, the only thing I played is there's that Marvel version of Bejeweled, and I've been poking at that a little bit. I stopped playing Future Fight. It just, it was dragging on. I felt like I wasn't really getting anywhere in that game, and there's no way I'm spending money. And this version is, this other Marvel game, rather, is, is kind of the same, where I feel like To do better in the game, you need to give them money so you can unlock slots to have multiple characters. Because as you play the game, they give you cards to level up the characters you use. But I can only have a small number of characters because I don't have the in-game money. And you only get it very sparingly in the game. So I keep running into characters and it's like, well, I guess I have to, you know, delete Captain Marvel in order to have Venom or or along those lines. Instead of just adding to my collection of characters that have various strengths for the game, so... We'll see how long I last doing that. It's just a thing to to kill time right now. And that's it. That's it. I'm sure there's some news pieces out there, but we don't really have time because we have a lot of Punisher to get into. So I'm going to go into... The topic of the week. Like we did last time with the Justice League, we're going to start with a spoiler-free review. And I'm just going to say, go watch it. If you don't mind violence, and there's there's no... Like there's there's adult situations and stuff like that, but even though it is on Netflix, there's not there's no uh, like explicit nudity or you know I mean the violence is still pretty bad, but 
If if you don't mind that and if you like The Punisher in Daredevil Season 2, go see it. I, again, think it didn't need to be as long as a lot of these single Netflix shows are. I think they actually could have told a much better, tighter story and fewer episodes and people still would have loved it, maybe more than they do. But I've been reading a lot of things. A lot of people are actually saying they like it better than Jessica Jones when that was their top one. In general, I think it slows down at some points. I think some of the subplots might be unnecessary for their core narrative. But in general, the show keeps moving. All of the actors do a really good job. And in total, I think it makes for a good story. Everything else I have is for spoilers. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. You're going to hear about some other shows on the geek to geek podcast network. And we're going to come back. If you have not watched The Punisher yet, this is the time to jump off. If you have, go ahead, listen through those commercials. And we are going to dig into spoilers right after this. I'm Void. And I'm Beach. And together, we're the geek to geek podcast. Well, we make it. It is kind of us, but I guess it's separate. Every week, we pick a topic from geek or digital culture and chat about it for a while. And you're invited. We talk about books and movies, games, comics, the internet. Or really whatever we feel like. Yeah, that too. So look for the geek to geek podcast on iTunes. Or wherever your podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Or whatever. Hey everyone, I'm Katie. And I'm Chelsea, and we're the hosts of the podcast, Tea Time with Katie and Chelsea. We are two best friends who love pop culture. We try to have a female perspective on things, but we really just talk about anything we like. What are some recent topics we've done, Katie? Uh, Well, we've talked about girl power songs, Wonder Woman, Veronica Mars, young adult fiction novels, San Diego Comic Con, and so much more. So grab your cup of tea or whatever your drink of choice is and download our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher and start listening today. Hi, my name is Joe Hogan, and I'm a geek. And if you're currently listening to this, there's a good chance you're a geek too. So check out my podcast, Geektitude. Each week, I talk with somebody about their geek aptitude. Sometimes I talk to people in a geeky profession, Sometimes it's someone doing something really cool with their geekiness. Often it's another geeky podcaster, but it's always someone who wants to share their inner geek. So join me each week as we come together to geek out about all the geeky stuff we love. And remember, this week, keep it geek. And we are back. We're part of the geek to geek Podcast Network, and none of us pay money to advertise. So head to geek to geekcastcom see if any of our shows tickle your fancy. All right, let's get into some spoilers for The Punisher. Uh, First off, I think I personally started off in the wrong place with this show because you could tell from the trailers they were doing a bit of rewriting with the character's origins. Now, of course, the scene you see in the trailer where he's with his family and a guy in a mask comes and grabs his family, we find out that's actually a dream sequence, and he's imagining himself killing his family because he feels responsible. But they still rewrote the character's origins. Now, when it comes to the Punisher, I'm okay with that on a certain level. It makes sense for him to not always be a Vietnam veteran. You know, they keep updating him to make him serve in Iraq or Afghanistan, Desert Storm, you know, whatever suits the narrative and the relative age that they want the character to be. And that I'm fine with. What I don't like is this, and we talked about it when Fletch was on the show, like in Tim Burton's Batman, where you find out the Joker is responsible for killing Batman rather than just criminals. Same thing here. I like it when the mob is, in general, and the system that created the mob, responsible for the death of Frank Castle's family. Once you give him a specific list of people, like they showed at the beginning of the show, he kills that specific list of people and tries to move on with his life. So they introduce other people, you know, surprise, there was actually other people responsible. So now you have more people to kill. It feels a little lazy to me. And I know it might also seem lazy just to say, I like all bad guys. But it cuts to the core of a character to say, I'm, I'm never going to see this ever happen again to somebody else Un- unless, you know, they were criminals and then I will remove them from their family. I've always preferred that, you know, and, and maybe they're worried it contrasts too much with Daredevil, where Daredevil fights people because he feels a need to do right. But he doesn't do it because he necessarily lost something like I guess. Yes, his dad was also killed by the mob and that sort of thing, but that's not why he does it. I can't, I think if I didn't enter this show with that already in mind of the boy, I, you know, I don't know how I feel about them rewriting his origin. I think I would have liked it a lot better. Like if you removed it, turn it into a completely different show. It didn't have to do with the Marvel Universe. It didn't have to do with Frank Castle. It wasn't the Punisher. I would probably say this looks a lot like a Punisher story. 
but I feel like I would like it a lot more because in the end, you know, he's finally he joins the the group of former soldiers. He's talking about his problems. He's gotten rid of the Punisher. I mean, we see at the beginning of the show when he finishes killing off the, the gangs responsible, he burns the Punisher vest like in his mind. He's done. And then we get a bearded Punisher that I think is a, a nod to the Greg Recker run. Everybody drink uh, where he had a, a beard the whole time. Well, part of the time. As far as the rest of the structure, I don't know that it's as strong as other shows that jump between a hero and a villain, because here I feel like Lewis, who was the uh, former, I think they said he was in the army, clearly issues with PTSD and doesn't know where to direct his anger. And then he sort of becomes our, I guess, anti-punisher, for lack of a better term, in that he's also killing people, but for completely different reasons that aren't seen as just as Frank Castle's. Lewis didn't seem like a great multi-episode villain to me. And now I think it's a good story, and I think it's good to draw that parallel with Frank Castle, just like a lot of these other Marvel shows are doing. They're adding a character that you see as a parallel to who your main character is. And there is actually a really good issue of the Marvel Max run. Max was, um, it's like adult Marvel comics where they can have nudity and swearing, and the, the Punisher Max, no other superheroes exist in that run. And there's an issue there where there is another former soldier that starts gunning down people or, or doing something. And the Punisher, it's almost like this pity killing thing where he understands the situation and he helps the guy die. It's very sad, you know, but it's also touching. I was waiting for something like that here. I feel like we got a little bit of it. There was a touch of that at the end, but it wasn't as strong as I was hoping it would be. I knew where they were going as soon as they introduced that character, but I was really hoping we would get a little more out of it in terms of, I guess, emotion. Not to say that his story isn't emotional at all, and I'm sure there are some people it's very much going to hit home with, but just for my money, again, I'm drawing from the comics, and I'm thinking about a specific comic book issue. I think it was even a single-issue story, and not being able to you know, see that translated, or rather it didn't have the same effect on me as the comic book did. I also feel like since we don't learn that Russo, we don't get the plot twist that Russo is a bad guy until later on, I feel like Lewis is a bit of a placeholder of a villain. He's there for now so they can pull the rug out from under us later on, and I don't like that. They did that in Luke Cage with Cottonmouth and Mariah, but both of those were very dynamic, interesting characters, where this was Again, there was more going on. I don't want to feel like I'm insulting the storyline or insulting the idea of a soldier coming back home and not being able to deal with, you know, what happened when they were overseas. I absolutely don't want to do that, but it just he didn't feel as strong of a connection with the rest of the story, I guess, to me. Or I don't know. There there was something in there that that just didn't click where I was really looking forward to his story moving forward. Maybe it was just because I thought I knew how it was going to end up. Also, I totally ruined it for myself. I kept hearing Billy Russo, Billy Russo, Russo, Russo. And I was like, I know that name. I know it has to do with Marvel Comics. And I looked it up and it ruined the ending of the show for me. Because once I knew that Billy Russo was the character known as Jigsaw, which we mentioned, I think, in uh, the episode with Fletch. I think we mentioned him because he pops up in one of the other Punisher movies. We mentioned Jigsaw. I didn't know that going in and I wish I, I, I hadn't looked it up. So I, I have every issue of the Garthanis run, but he doesn't really deal with Jigsaw. He's more of an 80s Punisher villain. When I looked it up, I knew, OK, he's going to get his face smashed into glass a lot by the end of this show. And then maybe that'll just be a nod and they'll kill him. Or as we saw, he actually lives to return another day as our villain. Let's move on into some Easter eggs. First off, so called the battle van. So called the battle van. On my last episode with Fletch, I had only seen part of the first episode, and I said, he's in a van right at the beginning. It's a nod to the battle van, and he just said he's smiling because he's in. And now I know why. The battle van is a, a character throughout the entire thing. He's got his big black van full of guns that he drives around in. So I thought that was a very nice nod. And in general, I feel like this has a feel of an earlier Punisher, not the Punisher that I read and enjoyed. He is very much stoic, a loner, doesn't talk a lot. And and like the Everybody Drink Grek Reka run, he's inserted into a situation and the story is more about the situation itself. You know, we get Detective Soap in the, the Marvel Knights run, I think, where the Punisher isn't necessarily, I mean, he's your antagonist. He's, he's, you know, the main character, but he's not necessarily the person we follow the whole time. 
is he is the force of nature that comes barreling through. And I don't know that we're ever going to get that from this Punisher because the creators very much wanted to humanize him. He talks a lot. He talks about his feelings and his emotions instead of blatantly saying, I hate them, so I kill them, which is the way Garth Ennis approaches the character. I don't know. I I guess just me, I prefer that approach because that's kind of that, you know, heck yeah, fist pump sort of thing, even though we don't agree with him. We know he's Frank Castle is not a good man. And I think that's the other twist is in the show. They wanted him to be a more sympathetic character, not just somebody who went around shooting people because he wanted to. And I know that was a big deal here, too. They even bring up the issue of gun control. And it seems like the show comes down on the side of it's okay to have a gun so long as you use it responsibly. Which is interesting because the reason Karen Page owns a gun is because she got herself in a situation where she ended up having to kill somebody. And from that point was so afraid that she had a gun. And I don't, well, I, this isn't a political show. I don't know that fear is a good reason to have somebody have a deadly weapon. I think that's more likely they're going to use it incorrectly. But anyway, it's a very different take on the Punisher. All right, Easter eggs. Let's power through these here. First off, Micro says, welcome back, Frank. At the beginning of the show, this is the title of the first arc of the Marvel Knights Punisher run by Garth Ennis, where at the end, it's fun. He throws a man off of it's it's fun. I shouldn't talk about violence being fun, but he throws somebody off the the top of the Empire State Building. And the end, it says, welcome back, Frank. It's him coming back to life. It's a long story. They did some really weird stuff with him in the 90s where he was hunting angels and all this weird stuff. But he throws a man off of the the top of the Empire State Building, and it's welcome back, Frank. And then it gets into all the crazy ultra violence and black humor that Garth Ennis's Marvel Knights run had before he moved into the Punisher Max, where it was far more serious and dark. There's a mention of the Nucci crime family. These are major villains of the Garth Ennis Marvel Knights run. I don't know if we'll see that down the line. I'm thinking maybe I'll get to my thoughts in a second. But Maganucci was a, a, a main bad guy in uh, the Punisher Knights, the Marvel Knights comic, which took place in the proper Marvel universe. I know it's kind of confusing. Marvel Knights was the Punisher run. Spider-Man appears in the book. Daredevil appears in the book. I believe that's the comic where we got that famous scene where he he tapes a gun to the Daredevil's hand and makes him make a choice. I could be wrong. That might be in a different storyline. But then after Marvel Knights, they canceled that. That was like a miniseries. And then they started a Punisher Max series, which was very adult. There were no other superheroes. The Punisher aged in real time. He was a uh, Vietnam vet living in modern day, had been uh, active for decades killing criminals. So in the Marvel Knights run, the Nucci family is one of the bad guys. Uh, That would be fun, personally, I think, to see down the road. Billy Russo, like I said, I ruined it for myself, is a character known as Jigsaw, who was a very prominent early Punisher villain back when everybody, his villains, it was almost like they were Dick Tracy villains, where they had to have something weird about them. He's a mobster. He gets thrown through glass. He gets all cut up. He becomes a villain with the name Jigsaw. Pete Castiglione, which is what the Punisher calls himself, well, instead of Frank Castle, Castiglione is the original name of the Castle family. It was Americanized when they came over. That pops up in the comics and he uses it every once in a while. We see Frank reading Moby Dick. That's about a man who's obsessed of finding a whale he thinks is responsible for ruining his life. He gives up everything in the hunt. You know, that's a obvious parallel to Frank's story. Just like we see Billy Russo reading Dorian Gray about a man who is so ob- obsessed with retaining his good looks and his fortune and his his good lifestyle that everything ends up falling apart and he loses everything in the end. Also interesting in that he loses his good looks at the end and that the actor who plays Russo played Dorian Gray in a movie back in 2009. At one point, Russo is referred to as a man of wealth and taste. That is a reference to the Rolling Stones song Sympathy for the Devil, which was another foreshadowing to tell you that he's a bad guy. This one I thought was good. Uh, the uh, Lewis and his father watch the... Ali Foreman fight that took place in 1974, the same year the Punisher was introduced. As far as connections to the rest of the Marvel Universe, Karen Page wrote a story called Chaos Under the Streets. We see that newspaper headline in the background, I believe, when they're at the bulletin. And then when the Punisher is attacking a group of mobsters, one of them ends up on top of a pinball machine. Oddly enough, this is a reference to a Punisher action figure. There was a line of Marvel Legends or whatever it was where you would get a figure and then something that sort of served as a play set. And his was a guy who was handcuffed to a Spider-Man pinball machine with a grenade in his mouth. 
Full credit to IGN.com because that is where I found those Easter eggs. Some of those I had picked up myself. A couple other ones I, I wasn't aware of, like the the um, the Ollie fight being from the year the Punisher came out. So where do we go to from here? Here's my thought for a season two of the Punisher. Since the Punisher is basically out of the game and he's talking about his problems and facing his issues now, trying to move on with his life for real instead of just hiding and hitting walls with a hammer a bunch of times, which I really liked, by the way. I figure the Nucci's are going to come back hard at Frank. I think they're going to kill Curtis because of all the other characters, he seems the most dispensable to me. No offense to Curtis. And that's going to give Frank an excuse to get back into the game of hunting and killing mobsters. I think the Nucci's will either hire Russo to help at some point, Joker style, like in The Dark Knight, or we're going to find out that he's the new head of the crime family, or we're going to do a Netflix uh, Marvel thing where the story is going to jump back and forth between Russo coming to power as Jigsaw And then the Punisher, you know, going after the Nucci crime family for, you know, a big showdown, kind of like we got at the end of Daredevil season one between Daredevil and the Kingpin. I would love to see another run in with the Kingpin. I think those two characters work very well together. Spoilers in the Marvel Max Punisher run. He ends up dying when he kills the Kingpin. They end up killing one another. And by that point, you know, Frank Castle's very much older because he was a Vietnam vet and that sort of thing. But I think there's unfinished business there, and I would love to see that. I would also like to see maybe some references to other MCU Netflix shows or some tie-ins. I think they said Luke Cage is done shooting. I don't know if Iron Fist is shooting a season two, which is a mistake. Those should have been put together as Luke Cage and Iron Fist. I like that there's at least some awareness, even an offhand throwaway line somewhere where they mention all of the people that he's killed. Because they're supposed to be interconnected. That said, I do like that the Punisher of all of them have a throwaway line. I've always thought the Punisher works the best on his own rather than incorporated in the greater Marvel U. I just don't feel like the character mixes well with a bunch of superpowered people in capes flying around. And that's it. That's it. I know we went through that really fast. I want to know what you guys think. Next week, our poll list is going to be The Runaways. There's currently three episodes up on Hulu right now, so I'm going to try and catch up with those. And the episode may be late next week. I have to wait for the month to turn over so that I have server space again. So, uh, But keep an eye out for that. So you might have an extra couple days to watch The Runaways. More importantly, I want to know what you guys thought about The Punisher. You can find us on Reddit. You can find me on Twitter. I am at ComicBoxCast. I am personally at Noby. We have a Slack channel. We're on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook by searching geek to geek Cast. We're on there as a network. So come on out. Let me know what you guys think. Big thanks to everybody who wrote their own thoughts on Justice League over on Reddit. I think there's some really good points made there, so make sure you go and check those out. And that is it. Star ratings and reviews. Subscribe to the show. Tell all your friends. And we will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening for 75. Those of you that have been here from the start, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's seeing the reviews and the comments and the numbers slowly ticking up of people who download are really one of the big reasons that I do this. The other is I'm a comic nerd and I like talking about comic books. So we're going to close the comic box. box. We're going to close the top. We're going to close the comic box on issue 75 and I will see you guys next week. The comic box. Punisher. I don't know how to do blues music. Vocally acapella likes. Twang.